This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall and his BYU Cougars start what they hope will be a very special 2014 season on the road against the new look Yukon Huskies and their first year head coach Bob Diaco. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN on this beautiful night in Hartford, Connecticut. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime. Presented by Jimmy Johns as part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. And our matchup, the BYU Cougars on the road to take on UConn. And hi, everybody. Welcome here inside the booth. Dave Fleming along with Danny Cannell. Allison Williams is with us as well. We all welcome you to another year of Friday nights here, and we are ready for it. Part of a big opening weekend here in college football. And, Danny, what that really means this time of year, we get to find out stuff about these teams. Last night we found out a lot, say, about Texas A&M, and really, in some ways, that's the theme of the whole weekend. I can't wait. I'm tired of predicting. I'm tired of guessing who's going to win what conference. I want to see games on the field. I love watching the quarterbacks. A lot of positions, shakedowns coming out. You've got Alabama. They're starting Blake Sims, but they're also going to play Jake Coker. You've got the Georgia versus Clemson team, the game. Both teams replacing the all-time conference leaders statistically as passers and Aaron Murray and Taj Boyd. Then you've got LSU, Wisconsin. Both teams, new quarterbacks. Should be some great matchups tomorrow. I can't wait to see what we learn about those teams. And speaking of quarterbacks, we have a really good one in our matchup here tonight. BYU features, I think, one of the most dynamic athletes in the whole country. That's Taysom Hill. He is special. He is a dynamic playmaker at the quarterback position. Can make a ton of plays with his legs. Rushed for 1,344 yards last season. That was more yards than Steve Young rushed for his entire career. Taysom Hill had it in one season. Needs a little bit of work as a passer. He can definitely improve there. But he could kick off a Heisman campaign of his own with a big performance tonight. Well, I think you're right about that. So we'll see Taysom Hill on the field for the first time in 2014. There is some news around this BYU team. For more on that, let's welcome in Allison Williams. Yeah, Dave, BYU announced last night that both their senior starting cornerbacks did not make the trip. Jordan Johnson and Robertson Daniel have been held back, suspended from this team for disciplinary reasons. That means BYU will start a sophomore, Michael Davis, and a freshman, Jordan Prater, at cornerback. So expect to see less man-to-man, -man, more zone defense with this safety always over the top to help out with UConn's talented wide receiver, Jeremy Davis. A significant loss for the BYU defense, whose offense is already without their top returning tailback, Jamal Williams, who's also been suspended for disciplinary reasons. Dave. All right, Allison, thanks. It's not great news for Bronco Mendenhall, who is in his 10th year at the head of this BYU program with big expectations coming into 2014. Yeah, but it's the type of school where they have, you know, a strict set of rules and they have a high standard, higher standard than most schools around the country. And, you know, at times you have to enforce those rules. And that's exactly the situation Bronco Mendenhall is in tonight. And some other guys are going to have to pick up the slack. Meanwhile, the big story on UConn's side is this is the start of a new era. And there is Bob Diaco comes over, defensive coordinator from Notre Dame, has a great track record as an assistant. This is his first ever head coaching job. While he was at Notre Dame, every year there were rumors, when's Bob Diaco going to take that head job? Felt like this was the right opportunity to take. The timing was right. And that's why he's landed here at UConn. Well, UConn and Bob Diaco, they won the toss, and Coach Diaco elects to defer. So BYU is going to get the ball first here. It'll be UConn kicking off at home on just a spectacular night. Conditions are ideal for this game. A couple thousand miles away from home for the Cougars. And for UConn, it, it does feel like a fresh start for a program that had a lot of success just a few years ago and fell on some very hard times these last couple seasons. Bob Diaco has come in to change everything about this football program. So Bobby Puyo will kick it off deep. BYU's special teams, particularly their kick return game, very strong last year. Adam Hine, Paul Lasique are deep to receive. And that is Hine in the end zone. He will take a knee and BYU will come out with Taysom Hill, their quarterback, who yesterday told Danny what he expects on the first drive. Taysom, you're walking to the line of scrimmage. What's going through your mind? The biggest thing is just taking one play at a time. So I, I do my best not to project. 
um, about how big that first play is of the game, but uh, I worry about what the play is and what I need to do on that play to execute it at a high level. The junior, the captain of this team, Taysom Hill, last year almost 3,000 yards passing, well over 1,000 yards rushing, and his first play handoff. Not much room there. This UConn defense holds the carry to just about three yards, and that is Paul Lasique. We will see him handle the ball a lot. First thing you'll notice about BYU, tempo. It's all the rage of college football, and they might be one of the fastest teams getting to the line of scrimmage and snapping that football. So second and seven. They do not huddle, and they do not waste time. He's going to throw for the first time and nowhere to go with the ball. And now he'll do what he's very comfortable doing, running and then sliding right near the first down mark. That's what makes him such a tough player to defend. If nothing's there in the pass, he can hurt you with his legs. After the play, late hit, offense number 10, 15-yard penalty, the line to gain the fade, first down. So, Matthews with the personal foul penalty. They did get a first down. So, it will be first down. But you can see on the corner left side, screen, yep. Matthews came in for a late hit. So, a flag for the penalty. So that moves BYU back to the 20-yard line. It is first and 10, though. At least it was supposed to be. The down marker still reads second down. And I think they need to get this sorted out. There was some confusion about what down it is. Last year, BYU eight wins, UConn just three and nine, although those three wins, their last three games. Well, we'll see if we can get a clarification. Here's the penalty on Mitch Matthews. See him at the top of your screen. Coming back, Clay was, Clay was dead. It's a late hit. You gotta be smarter than that early in the game. You had a first down. How you set yourself back to be much more challenging. Move the ball now. Tracy Jones is the referee, so it is first down. But they lose those 15 yards back to the 20. Taysom Hill going to look to throw, and there's his first pass of the year. It is complete to Mitch Matthews, who gets across the 25-yard line gain of six. That's where I'm really interested to see how Taysom Hill has developed as a passer. We all know what type of athlete he is, but last year completed 54% of his passes. I like to see that up around 60, 65%. And then his touchdown inter interception ratio, he could definitely improve on that as well. He threw 14 picks last year, the fake give, and Hill keeps it. He's got room, and he's not afraid of contact. Out across the 35-yard line for a first down. There's another flag on the field. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 20. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So the face mask penalty, and that time it goes against UConn, and a player who they think has a ton of talent, their young safety, Obi Mellon Fonwu. See him there, that right hand. And really another one, this is kind of first game jitters. You're gonna see some sloppy play early. But as a coach, you're just trying to get your guys to play smart football. First drive of the game, Lasique carries with a big hole inside UConn territory, right down to the 40-yard line and close to a first down. Paul Lasique might be one of the best stories of college football. BYU, of course, had a history of guys coming internationally. But the New Zealand native was a rugby player. It's really taking football. He'll get the ball again, and he gets the first down. Bulls ahead for a gain of about three. He's a guy Bronco Mendenhall told us three years ago, did not know the rules, didn't know anything about the game, and now he's a big part of this offense. And team captain, too, you know, voted by his peers as team captain. I think that speaks volumes to the type of impact he's had on this team as well. So no Jamal Williams. You heard Allison talk about that before the game. Their starting tailback, Lucique, is going to get a lot of carries here tonight. On first down, Hill back to pass. He'll run again. And Taysom Hill ducks under the contact with a flag behind the play. So another penalty flag here. If it stands, a gain of eight. Holding offense, number 74, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's Brock Stringham with the holding call. The offensive line, Danny, a big question mark. A lot of talent, but a lot of it unproven for BYU. And they'll rotate a lot of guys in. When they go at this tempo and they get so many plays on the field, it's not unusual for them every series even to rotate complete offensive line units. Starting a true freshman at left tackle, which is pretty unusual. Louis Lapuajo will watch him tonight. He'll hand off. 
And over the right side, running across the 45 yard line, Adam Hine, the junior from Santa Clara, Utah, three yard gain. Tackle for Angelo Pruitt. He may be the most talented player along that front line for UConn. One of the leaders on that defense. Second and long, Hill. Again, nowhere to go with the ball. He dumps it down short, and it is complete inside the 35-yard line. Algie Brown with the catch and run. They'll bring up third down for BYU. Well, an efficient drive by BYU. A couple penalties really only to stop them. It's a critical third down for them. They would love to go down and put some points on the board first drive of the game. First third down of the year for BYU. Hill, the play fake, and the quick hitter right side, but not enough. Stop short. They'll keep the offense on the field, though. This is sort of a no man's land for them. It's just outside of field goal range. No use in punting. The way they've been moving the ball in a fourth and you know, two or three yards, they should be able to pick this up if they just keep executing the way they have been. Good tackle by Andrew Adams to set up this fourth down play and a big play early in this one. Hill is going to keep it himself, looking to get to the outside, and he lunges forward. I don't know. That second effort, he may have gotten there, but it's close. And they say first down. No measurement necessary. Taysom Hill with that extra effort converts on fourth down. And that's where the safety's got to come up and make that play to stop that first down attempt from Taysom Hill. Had an opportunity, had him wrapped up. That's where Taysom Hill is so tough. Hill, play fake again, rolling right. Looking downfield, and it's incomplete. So pressured there, and forced to get rid of the ball. The linebacker, Marquise Van, second and ten. It may look like something small and innocuous, but I think that's an improvement for Taysom Hill. Not forcing the ball down in the red zone, you know, not taking any chances that aren't necessary, just throwing the ball away, realizing you can get it back, and take another shot. We know what he can do with his legs. The question is, can he polish up the passing game, Hine, left side, could not quite get to that edge. Good pressure, Andrew Adams, another nice play from his safety spot. Boy, and if UConn could somehow hold BYU to a field goal here, a field goal attempt, that would be a huge victory for them, I would feel. Just knowing the kind of struggles they had last season and the opening game, you know, you're facing a high-powered offense. If they could come up with a third down stop here, that could definitely energize this UConn crowd and team. Well, they got a lot of students here. School has started. On third and eight, 13th play of the drive, and a nice throw from Hill along the left sideline, complete to Mitch Matthews. One of the things that jumps out to me at BYU is the size of their receivers. Mitch Matthews, number 10, makes this catch. He's 6'6", 215 pounds, a little back shoulder throw from Taysom Hill. It's almost indefensible as a defensive back. You're just on an island. If you put that on his back shoulder, you just can't find it. Matthews, who was hurt for part of last year, they think he can be a big weapon this season. So inside the 20, first and 10, Hill will throw it back. That's not really an option. That's a backwards pass with some zip on it and good hands by Algie Brown to then carry it forward for a gain of six. I kind of like that technique. You know, it gets him in his hands quicker. You can get a little more separation between yourself and the back. Pretty unique little play there. Well, he gave a good spot there. So second and a long two coming up inside the 10-yard line. First drive of the year. For BYU. Hill from the shotgun. Pressured right. Hill looking to run. Taysom Hill wide open into the end zone. There is a flag. So Hill scores, but we'll see. Bronco Mendenhall waiting, and BYU starts to celebrate. Holding defense, number 20. Penalty is declined. He's out of the play. Touchdown. That drive was emblematic of Taysom Hill. What he can do to hurt you. He hurts you through the air and with his legs. That's what makes him so tough to stop. And how about we talked right out of the gate about the number of plays that BYU runs a 15-play drive to start the year, ending up in the end zone. So the extra point coming. Trevor Sampson, this is his first year as the place kicker, and that was a low snap. A pretty good hold, and somehow it's over the crossbar and through. That was not pretty, but it got the job done, and BYU's got a 7-0 lead. 
So Taysom Hill with his legs engineers an impressive drive. BYU, great start to their season. Uh, UConn waiting for the ball for the first time in 2014 on this beautiful night in Hartford. BYU spectacular start to their year. A 15 play drive, seven first downs, a big fourth down conversion. And BYU has the early 7-0 lead here on the road against the UConn Huskies. And Taysom Hill, he was the key to that drive. He's a special player. Really impressed with what he did in his arm. Didn't force the ball down the field. Take what was given. Now you'll see that smile a lot on the field. He is a guy who plays with energy, with enthusiasm. He is a big personality, a leader on this BYU team. And Trevor Sampson, who just barely got the extra point through. This is his first ever college game kicking. Deshaun Fox, Josh Mariner back to receive for UConn. And a fairly short kickoff. Fox will return starting across the 10 there's a flag down with a lot of room to run and Fox is across midfield but we'll see if it's coming back great return but another penalty flag on the kickoff 40 yards if it stands during the return personal foul illegal block below the waist return team number 34 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul will be first down. So we've seen a lot of flag. We had three penalties combined on that first drive. Now another one here on the kickoff. And sometimes, Danny, I do think the opener first yeah. game. There's no preseason in college football, so you're getting a lot of kinks out. It's a coach's worst nightmare, <laughs> you know, because you're watching sloppy play. Bob Diaco was prophetic, though. I mean, he said, he said, hey, it's going to be ugly. We're going to make mistakes, but we need to get better. Part of that learning process is learning from your mistakes and eliminating them as soon as you can. Well, there's Casey Cochran, the sophomore from right here in Connecticut who won the job this fall. Pretty spirited competition for Cochran, who played very well at the end of last year, under center with Max DiLorenzo, the tailback in the I formation as UConn has the ball inside their own 20 for the first time all year. And DiLorenzo straight ahead, running the ball, pops out. And BYU thinks they have it. They do. First play for UConn, and they turn the ball over. Uh, you're a two-touchdown underdog. You're playing at home. You're trying to get things turned around. You cannot afford to turn the ball over your opening drive. Again, though, first game, jitters. De Lorenzo's going through the hole. Great tackle from number 43. Right up the middle. I'll let you handle his name, Dave. <laughs> Jeremiah Leuta Duyer. Nice play for the kid who we did not expect to start. And last minute, they made the change to get him in the starting lineup. And you think that was a good decision? Uh, I think it was. I, I think that's why you get the big bucks, because you can say all those pronunciations with ease. <laughs> Jeremiah makes the play. Nobody behind the And bench. UConn will not be happy about that start. We, Bob Diaco, the number one key to the game for his team was protect the ball. First play. They give it up. So Taysom Hill already up 7-0 with BYU. Play fake, going for the end zone, and there's Matthews caught touchdown. One play turnover, one play touchdown pass. It's 13-0 BYU. Twenty six yards and a beautiful delivery from the quarterback beautiful play call great execution They had a little play action pass in the backfield sucked up the linebackers held the safety with a tight end in the middle of the field was wide open Taysom Hill delivered a perfect strike. All right. Let's see if this one's a little more routine. It is extra point up and good BYU. What a start Cougars lead 14 nothing. We told you at the start, Taysom Hill would love to kick off a Heisman campaign. Not a bad way to start going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kenny Hill last night. Not Taysom Hill. It's a good day to be a Hill, right? <laughs> ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Delivery and in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Visit ESPN Fan Shop powered by Dick's Sporting Goods for your officially licensed fan gear. 
Kind of a cool shot there inside the Mark Twain house right here in Hartford. That's the desk where one of the great American authors penned many of his most famous words, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, just a couple miles from where we sit on this beautiful night in Connecticut. A lot of history in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm local, it's right down the street from me. Mom actually took the kids to that house. Dad missed out on that day. I'm about right. to make my own trip. You gotta go, <laughs> big part of American history. Just a couple miles away, Taysom Hill, already in the history books on BYU's side, and what a start to his year, 14-0. Just over five minutes in, and the kickoff to Sean Fox will take it across the 20 and hit and tripped up short of the 25. That's where UConn will take over. Well, ESPN, you're home for college football on Saturday. First things first, top 20 matchup, Clemson taking on Georgia at 5.30 Eastern. And then number 14, Wisconsin, number 13, LSU from Houston at 9 ESPN College Football. Presented by Hampton Hotel starting at 5.30 on ESPN. A great opening weekend, and those are two very big matchups. Yeah, I think those will be the tightly, the most tightly contested games. I can't wait to watch, see how they play out. And then... You know, all the conference supremacy talk, who has the best conference? It actually it does matter. The way things are shaping up with the landscape, it does matter. It does. Well, we had a penalty. It wasn't very well marked, but there was an offsides penalty on the kickoff, and UConn wants them to do it again. So BYU is going to have to re-kick, this time from the 30. We've seen two short kickoffs already, so I think Bob Diaco and company are feeling like they got a chance for some pretty good field position. So Trevor Sampson and company will have to redo it here. Kind of a nightmare start for UConn. Gave up the long drive, then the turnover on their very first play from scrimmage, and the next play for BYU, a second touchdown. This is a low squibber, and it's going to be taken by Fox across the 30, near the 35. And so UConn will get the ball back here, trailing 14 to nothing. Dave Fleming, Danny Cannell here in Hartford. And Danny, you're talking about some of those matchups tomorrow. We learned a lot about some teams last night. We'll do the same tomorrow night. Yeah, Georgia's trying to replace Aaron Murray with Hudson Mason, a fifth-year senior. You've got Clemson go with Cole Stout, quarterback trying to replace Taj Boyd, one of the most prolific passers in their respective conferences. It's going to be tough shoes to fill. you got Georgia with Todd Gurley looking to start a Heisman campaign. You go to the Wisconsin LSU game, another one that should be tightly contested. Wisconsin made a switch at quarterback, going to a much more athletic QB and Tanner McAvoy. And then you got LSU, they're going with two quarterbacks. So just a lot of stuff that needs to shake out. Teams trying to figure out their offenses. Well, for more on that Clemson Georgia matchup, Allison Williams down on the sideline. Allison, what are you hearing from? Uh, from that one. Well, Danny, you mentioned that Cole Stout will be the starter for Clemson at quarterback, but don't be surprised if you also see Deshaun Watson. I talked to Holly Rowe, who will be working the sidelines for that game. They, She told me that they have a package they want to work Watson in. Remember, he's from Gainesville, Georgia. He knows those Bulldogs. Well, Casey Cochran, first play of this drive for UConn. A little better than the first play from their yes. previous one when they turned it over. A pass complete. And so Kamal Abrams, the first positive play for UConn here in this 2014 season. Well, there is Max DiLorenzo, who started the game, got the first carry, put it on the ground, and he right now is watching from the sideline. So second and one, nearing midfield after that re-kick, and a good return, good field position for the Huskies. Hand off, left side, and just squirting through across the first down mark right near midfield. Josh Mariner with the first down carry. First down, that first one is always the hardest. But, you know, you just want to go out and execute. You know, try to get that first half jitters behind you. Everybody's, you know, got some guys playing for the first time. Hang on to the football. Don't turn it over. You talk about offensive line issues. This UConn team had them severely last year. They're breaking in some new guys as well. So first and ten from midfield against a pretty big and tough BYU defense. And off. Mariner left side and a nice gain inside the 45 down to the 44. Danny, how about some of our impact players? Well, you see UConn establishing the run game right now, but their threat through the air is Jeremy Davis. Fifth-year senior, he's a leader. 
Big physical guy, 6'3", 216. Then for BYU defensively, Remington Peck, the defensive end, and Bron Bronson Kafusi. How about this for a size guy? 6'7", 265 pounds. He is imposing. You see him number 90 right there in front of you. He's a quarterback's nightmare with that wingspan and get up and knock the balls down. Yeah, last year he was really like a true defensive lineman. This year you see him standing up there. He's more of a rush outside linebacker, but immediately puts pressure on Cochran. Nicely set up the screen for a first down and more. And out of bounds right near the 25-yard line, the true freshman, Arkel Newsom with the catch and run. Beautiful play call by offensive coordinator Mike Cummings. If you're struggling offensively up front, one way to take the load off, call a screen. Let the defensive line think they're going to sack the quarterback, drop it right over the top of them to your quick running back. Let him make a play. It's also a confidence boost for the quarterback. Nice ease of completion. A big play for the Huskies. 18-yard gain. So UConn on the move, and we will see some more from that kid. He is not a big guy, but from here in Connecticut, a true freshman, they think he can be a star. He's electric. You put the ball in his hands, and he can make plays like that. And that's, I think that's what they'll try to do, simplify things, give him the ball on screens, fly sweeps. He's got the speed. He can get the edge. Mariner the tailback here on first and 10. UConn. Quite a contrast to BYU. Very deliberate. They huddle up. They take their time. Casey Cochran under center with the play fake. Pressured by Kafusi. Hit hard. And the pass is intercepted. Intercepted by the captain of the secondary, Craig Bills. And it's the second turnover already for UConn. When Casey Cochran was under a tremendous amount of pressure. He had the corner route open, but was getting hit right after he threw the ball. Watch him. He gets from, from both sides. He gets hit in the front and the back. Ball sails on him a little bit. See the corner route by number four is where he's trying to throw it. He's open. The ball just sails on him a little bit right to the arms of Craig Bills for BYU. So Rowley pressured from the front. Kafusi from the back. And Casey Cochran, who last year, that was sort of his calling card. Avoid those mistakes and the interceptions. Right away, he's got one this year. I'm putting that one on the offensive line. Now, yeah. I might be showing some favoritism toward the quarterback, but he was getting drilled, had a guy right in his face, which I think caused the Aaron throw. And their offensive line, just like BYU's, is not experienced. They're playing some new bodies up front and a real test against BYU. Not great field position, but BYU gets the ball for the third time already. And a handoff to Uhime. No running room. He got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. What I want to watch for UConn is how they adjust to the tempo. Because you kind of expect them to come out, struggle early, while they're trying to get their bearings. BYU's coming at you so fast. I want to see how they react. Do they start to adjust to that tempo? This time it's Lasique left side and another fairly short gain across the 10 out near the 12 yard line Jefferson Ashiru two straight plays making the tackle on the inside. So third down and a chance for UConn to make a stop here and get the ball back. BYU deep in their own territory. Hill with the flag flying, scrambles, got tripped up, and very close to the first down. We'll wait for the call. Foul. Well, and obviously we're having some trouble with that microphone, but another personal foul penalty against UConn. That's their second one of the game. And so instead of perhaps getting off the field on defense, first down BYU. Yeah, the mistakes keep coming. That's got to be Bob Diaco's worst nightmare. Trying to clean things up. I mean, it's bad to get beat, you know, when the team's better than you, but it's so much worse when you're just making it tough on yourself and you're beating yourself. And that's really what we've seen a lot from UConn. Combine that with an excellent BYU offense, and it's just a recipe for disaster. Hine straight ahead running outside the 35, down near the 36, a three yard run on first down. Julian Campenny with a blow to the face to draw that personal foul penalty. Second and seven, almost a wishbone type formation. Here's another flag thrown. 
And the ball carrier stopped for a gain of one. B.J. McBride right in there in the middle of things. Good tackle by McBride. Well, the flags are flying here tonight in Hartford. Here's the third down play. Keep an eye on the nose. Rushing three, dropping eight. Watch the hands. It's a little chippy there late. It's just been kind of one of those first quarters. Yeah, not a whole lot there. The penalty accepted by UConn, so that moves BYU back. Let's check in in a moment with Allison Williams. First, we'll have this second down play for Hill and BYU. A lot of time. Still looking for somewhere to go with the ball. Another flag thrown, and Hill pressured to the sideline, and he'll step out of bounds. Another one. And another, another flag. <laughs> We've already had eight now on this play, number nine and number ten penalties here in the first 10 minutes of this game. You're going to have a hold on the offensive line. What I believe another late hit by number 11 for BYU. So neither coach can be all that <laughs> thrilled with the penalty mistakes. And our head referee, Tracy Jones, he has been busy. Now they have to get it all sorted out. They will multiply play. Holding offense number 93. Holding it's number 53. Those penalties offset. After the play, personal foul, late hit, offense number 11. It'll be a 15 yard penalty, third down. So there are actually three penalties on the play. <laughs> there let's, weren't enough. Let's check in with Allison Williams. Hello, Allison. guys. Yeah, offensive coordinator for BYU, Robert and I knew penalties were going to be an issue. He was not happy with the offensive line last time where he, they were on the bench. He told one of his guys, keep your hands inside. You're going to get called for holding. Told another one, you better shut your mouth and play football or you're going to get called for unsportsmanlike conduct. I have a feeling they are not going to want to see him when they come off to the sidelines this next time. Uh, well, there is the offensive coordinator, an old offensive lineman himself, and so he takes a lot of pride. Also, is a very tough critic with his big guys up front. We used to have to run stadiums for every penalty you had. There are going to be some serious running for both teams as disciplinary measures. That's one way you cut out the penalties. So just to clear it up, you had offsetting <laughs> holding penalties plus the personal foul that's the penalty that gets enforced. Taryn Houck is the guy who was called for that personal foul a receiver for BYU and because of all that I think they're trying to figure out how they're going to review this and it may be that they're reviewing down and distance and situation and in some ways you can't blame the officials for getting a little confused. <laughs> now Bob Diaco's waiting for an explanation. His very first night as a head coach, he has been thinking about this night since he was a very young guy. I think he has known for a long time he wanted to be a head coach. He's been a great assistant in college football. And he was amped up before this game. Yeah, he was. I mean, he's, he's been amped up for this job. And he came in, made some quick changes right away. One of the most detail-oriented guys you'll ever come across. And that's typically with great coaches. That's a common characteristic between all of them. But when you talk about detail, Talking about paint color of the walls and the rails. And the dead ball penalty after the offsetting fouls. Leave the down at second down. Second down. So they just had a little confusion about the down. That second down play with the two holes plus the personal foul. The foul comes after the offsetting penalties. It's still second down. You got it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Let's go, and a guys. long way to go Let's for first. Go, a long, long way. The ball spotted back inside the 15. They need to get out to the 43 for a first down. So Taysom Hill and company. We'll see how aggressive they are from this part of the field. Already leading 14 nothing. And Hill looking to scramble. He will dive forward out near the 25. Still a long way to go. A decent gain of 11 yards, but it's third and very long. To show you how tough Taysom Hill is to stop, UConn's game plan defensively 
was don't let him beat with his legs. Let's let him try to beat us with his arm. They haven't been able to stop either. I mean, they're dropping a lot of guys into coverage, but they just can't keep contained and keep corralled in the pocket. It's so elusive. So third down, and they need 30. Hill dumps it short. Lasique without a lot of room. Lasique fighting forward, but he goes down and well short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down for BYU. And we will see the Cougars punt team for the first time. Scott Ariano, the senior, will come out to kick it away. I'll be interested to see, too, who's playing quarterback for UConn. They had mentioned they possibly would play two quarterbacks, Chandler Whitmer, who was in a quarterback competition to see who would get the start. But Bob Diaco and this UConn staff feel very good about Chandler Whitmer coming off the bench. So after a couple of turnovers, not Casey Cochran's fault, both of them, but... The offense a little bit sluggish. See what they do. Ariano punts one low and short, and that one kicks up, almost hit Bills in punt coverage. It'll roll to a stop just inside the UConn 30-yard line. 37-yard punt, no return. UConn gets the ball when we come back. BYU with the first quarter lead. The pomp and circumstance of opening night for the UConn Huskies at home against BYU, but trailing here in the first quarter, 14-0. Dave Fleming, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams with you on this beautiful night here in Hartford. The last play is being reviewed, and they're looking to see if the ball was touched by a BYU coverage man. Craig Bills on the coverage. It would matter in terms of field position. Danny, did you see anything? I didn't there. When we were watching it, I thought it did hit him, just watching it unfold. But then when you go and look at it, I don't know if there's any way you could definitively say, yeah, it hit him. That's where we want to mark the ball. I mean, it would give UConn maybe seven, eight yards extra field position, something like that. They would take it right now, I promise you. They would take it. <laughs> but I don't think you can tell. I mean, it, Live action, I thought maybe it hit him. Right, because of the way the ball bounced, but then you don't see it at all. The previous review was to determine if the kicking team had committed illegal touching. There was no touching by the kicking team. The play stands is called first and ten, UConn. No touching. We cleared that up. No touching. So UConn will have the ball for the third time. First possession, first play, fumble. Next possession, pretty good drive interception and the penalties have been a big story 187 yards of total offense by both teams 103 penalty yards for both teams and still decent field position for UConn and Casey Cochran still under center the quarterback for the Huskies and there's the running back Max De Lorenzo, who did fumble on the first play from scrimmage. UConn's been killing themselves. First play of the game, De Lorenzo takes it up the middle. You've got to wrap it up and secure it. Make sure you can't give it up. And then under some pressure, Cochran overthrows his intended receiver for the interception. That one hurt because it was in the red zone. You know, they were going down, looked like they had a really nice drive going. Can't turn it over in the red zone either. We still have not seen Jeremy Davis touch the ball, number 85. He is the standout, a very good player. At the top of the formation there, and it goes down to Deshaun Fox, who tried to get to that corner and got shoved out of bounds right near the first down mark. UConn fans thought there was a late hit, but no flag. Michael Davis with the tackle. So you said you talked about Dave, Jeremy Davis not getting balls, and that was a big part of BYU's game plan defensively. Allison talked about it right when we came on the air. They're going to help out you know, some of these defensive backs who aren't their typical starters. They're going to get some safety help over the top and make sure he doesn't beat them with a long ball. A pretty friendly spot. They did give UConn the first down. Now they hustle to the line this time. A little quicker tempo. And DiLorenzo nowhere to go. So the fast tempo did not work that time. Well, BYU, you got to remember, this defense, they're used to playing against up-tempo. They see it in practice all the time. They're not going to get caught off guard by anything. They're used to going fast. In fact, it's funny you say that. Dallin Levitt made a good play from his safety spot. Sometimes they get worried when they play slow tempo teams <laughs> because they feel like they'll get bored. <laughs> yeah, they sort of fall back on their heels, not ready to play. Ron Johnson, another true freshman in the backfield. Cochran throws short and the ball was juggled, but it was caught complete across the 45. 
to set up third down the tight end Sean McQuillan. I am glad they stuck with Casey Cochran. I was wondering if they would make the switch, but he looked like he was starting to find a rhythm. Of course, had that turnover, which was under pressure. I just never like seeing quarterbacks yanked. There's a look at Chandler Whitmer, who is getting loose. I think we will see him at some point, but I like the fact. I don't, you don't want to wreck a young quarterback's confidence by yanking him after a turnover. Let him land on something positive, if you can. So third down for Cochran and the Yukon Huskies. The throw is knocked down. And that was well defended, intended for the tight end, Sean McQuillan, but a good play there to knock the ball incomplete. And it'll be fourth down for UConn. Beautiful pass defense by number 25. Watch him extend that. Keeps that back left arm off the body of the, of the intended receiver. Tell you, Kaltai with a nice play. 21 seconds. 121. Thank you. So the clock. Kept running after the ball was knocked down incomplete. That was well done. I think that's where Casey Cochran also has to get off that receiver and go through his progression to the next guy. Might have forced that one in a little tight window. He had some time. Mm -hmm. But he got rocked in the series before. That's always in the back of your mind. Good, good, good. Fair catch, hey. and BYU will have the ball back here, still in the first quarter. Coverage of the FIBA Basketball World Cup begins on Saturday. Team USA takes the court against Finland. It's a preliminary round game at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN Saturday. So mix in a little hoops with all the college football that's going on. Just a 32-yard punt. Taysom Hill and company back on the field, leading 14-0. Hill rolling left and throwing left. He's got his man caught. Another flag on the play, but out into the open field, across midfield, and finally pushed out of bounds. A nice catch and run there for BYU. And will the big play stand? Mitchell Jurgens. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Offense number 74. After distance to the goal, we play first down. Brock Stringham, another penalty called on him, and that is a huge penalty to negate the big game. It was a 43-yard pass play. Checking out him, right tackle. Well, I mean, yeah. the hand was up there around the face mask. Not a whole lot of... I think the officials tonight are, obviously, they've thrown... A lot of laundry on the field. They're calling a pretty tight game. That one there, I, didn't, I thought they could have let that one go. Hand off. Lasique breaks one tackle and pulls his way forward. That's his style of running. Still not back to the 20. As the final seconds wind down. 45 seconds. That could be several <laughs> plays for the BYU offense. Penalties have killed this BYU offense. It's really the only thing that stopped them. Hill may be changing the play call at the line of scrimmage and now some whistles and I think BYU used a timeout first charge timeout so a timeout BYU. for the Cougars we'll be back to Hartford right after this our Friday focus how about our friends with game day getting set up for their first show of the year Fort Worth Texas the backdrop a lot of work and those guys are raring to go it's also the first game of the year and guess where they're going to be there also the last game of the year so Desmond looks like he's been enjoying some of the sights and sounds of Fort Worth Texas well, I think it is fitting we'll bring it all full circle yeah. the first playoff championship game in this new system in college football will take place in Arlington Texas when we're all done, we're just getting started. First quarter from Hartford, BYU with the ball. Leading 14-0, Taysom Hill, another completion out near the 25. Taryn Houck with the catch. And we'll see if BYU runs another play before the end of the first quarter. Hill, <laughs> he would like to. Yeah, they're, they're not going to get cheated. 
It's a pretty big play, third and seven. And they get this ball snapped. Hill throws, and it's caught. But a flag comes in, yeah. and that one could be against Mitch Matthews, who made the catch. I'm with you, Dave. I saw the same thing. Mitch Matthews a little push off. Tomorrow Summers had the coverage. But I don't know if the official saw it the same way. Here's a look at Matthews. You see the one-on-one -on -one match off with Summers, a freshman. Well, Bob Diaco, he's right there. Pass interference. Defense, number 21. The penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. Well, I don't know about that one. BYU I, gets a break as the first quarter comes to an end. I thought you got a veteran call right there. You got a veteran receiver. Sort of fitting that a flag ends it. BYU 14, <laughs> UConn nothing. Well, we don't want to send it away yet. There was some confusion with the officials. BYU's going to the sideline now. It's just the end of the first quarter, so I don't think you got to run an untimed down. And they're not going to. <laughs> so now it officially is the end of the first 14. It's everybody's first game. BYU. Dave Fleming, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams back here in Hartford. 14-0 BYU over UConn. Start of the second quarter. BYU really controlled play. They ran 26 plays from scrimmage as an offense in the first quarter. On pace for over 100 in the game. They're motoring. That's their goal. <laughs> That's their goal. Get triple-digit plays. Put up some impressive yardage. 167 yards. But they've also had 69 yards in penalties. So... Definitely room for improvement. The play fake, Taysom Hill looking to throw, and he's got the pass complete right side, and then turning it upfield, Jordan Leslie, his first catch in a BYU uniform. He's a kid who played for UTEP and was their best receiver, graduated, has transferred, eligible to play immediately, and they think he is going to be a big key. The senior from Houston. So first down, BYU getting close to midfield again. Almost that pistol formation and a handoff. Nowhere to go. Algie Brown just stuffed. And he lost a yard on the play. Dave, you remember at the beginning of the game, I said I wanted Taysom Hill. I wanted to see improvement in his efficiency and completion percentage. Tonight, I don't think you can get much better. 9 to 10 on the night. Really made smart decisions. One, his only incomplete pass was the throwaway he had. I mean, that's close to a pretty perfect game from Taysom Hill. Also has 44 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown. Hill under pressure. Flag thrown. Gets away. Hill to midfield. Down to the left sideline and pushed out of bounds. Finally inside UConn territory around the 40, but we'll see. Holding offense number 84. Team out penalty. Second down. Man, well, we the offensive line has struggled. Now it's the tight end's turn. Devin Mahina, he's going to get caught. Number 84 right there. See him get coming across. Gets out of position just a little bit and kind of grabs the defender. Oh, that was and like... again, how many big plays have been called back for BYU? They had a screen pass called back. That was a great rush by Taysom Hill called back. That's two in the last two minutes of game time. And for Mahina, that was almost two penalties in one. He tried to hold the guy initially, <laughs> missed, and then went back and held him for good measure. So second and 20, the penalties are just piling up, and especially for BYU. Hill gets away again, and he throws the ball downfield, and that one, a catch attempt, and no. The ball hit the ground, incomplete. Mitchell Jurgens. He's one of those guys who had a big play negated by a penalty. Almost a circus throw and catch from Taysom Hill to Jurgens. Officials all got together on the call and said it hit the ground. Here's one look at Jurgens on the sideline. Did he get his arms underneath it? Wow. Closer than I thought. BYU not calling the timeout to, well, maybe they will. Right as the ball is snapped. Play stopped. 
the previous play is under further review. I, I think we might have a catch. I thought he might have had his hands underneath it. Well, Bronco thinks so. So they're going to look at this one. The replay officials will go to work upstairs, and we'll see when we come back. Well, they did review that last play. BYU has a 14-0 lead over UConn just into the second quarter here in Hartford. They reviewed the last play, and the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. So it's third down and 20 for Taysom Hill and the BYU offense. From the shotgun, Hill looking to throw and nowhere to go with the ball. So he'll throw short. Lasique with the catch, but the good open field tackle by Jefferson Ashiru. And BYU stopped well short of the first down. Let's take one more look because I do think we got a real good angle here, Danny, to see the ball touch the ground. Yeah, we did. Once you zoom in on it, you see the nose of the football while it's bobbling around, touch the ground right there. So a good call. It was confirmed by the officials that it was an incomplete pass. So again, BYU's drive stop with a big penalty. By rule, the receiver has to maintain complete and continuous control all the way through the catch, the punt. Fox gets away once, not twice. And here come two more flags. So a couple more penalty flags on the play. That has been a theme of this game. Just over and over again. We've hardly had a play without a penalty. And this time on the special teams play. There have been 17 flags thrown, 11 penalties assessed. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number two. After distance to the goal, first down. So another penalty before UConn takes over. Let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. Chris. Dave, time now for a Dr. Pepper conference update. The defending conference champs in the Big Ten picking up right where they left off last year. You know, it took them three games to throw their first touchdown pass last year. But Michigan State has two in the first five minutes tonight against Jacksonville State. This one covering 71 yards. Cook to Lippin. It's already 14 to nothing Spartans, guys. Not a surprise in that one, Chris. And not really a surprise so far. BYU is a powerful team. A new quarterback for UConn on this possession and the handoff to Josh Mariner for a short game. Chandler Whitmer, number 10, the redshirt senior, fifth-year senior, is in for the first time. This was part of the game plan for UConn. They were going to play two quarterbacks. They knew Chandler Whitmer would come into the game to give Casey Cochran a spell, and they really like some of his intangibles, his leadership skills that Chandler Whit Whitmer brings to the field. And a physically talented guy, good athlete. He can use his arm and his legs. A guy who started two years ago and started several games last year. Whitmer throwing for the first time, and the pass is dropped. Here comes another flag from way behind the play. Amir Bradley could not hang on. Holding defense, number 43, 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So the holding penalty and the automatic first down for UConn. Saturday night football, number one Florida State trying to defend their title against Oklahoma State. It's the Cowboys Classic, 8 Eastern on ABC from Arlington. Saturday night football presented by Wells Fargo. And Florida State, they ran the table last year. Can they do it again starting tomorrow night? against an unranked Oklahoma State team, but a team that's had a lot of success in the last decade plus. Whitmer scrambling and pushed out of bounds, and guess what? Another penalty flag. Holding offense, number 34. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, you can see why Tracy has some good biceps. He's working hard throwing those penalty flags. Danny, so what do you think? The Seminoles get it started. Jameis Winston, his second year. Chance to win them all again. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be double-digit favorites in almost every game this season. This might be one of their toughest tests just because they're dealing with some unknown with Oklahoma State. I mean, Oklahoma State's going to bring an up-tempo offense, you know, a quarterback who can make some plays, and Florida State's breaking in a new defensive coordinator and Charles Kelly and some They've lost some guys in the NFL last year, but you look at what they bring back to the table in Jameis Winston, you know, a, an incredible offensive line, some playmakers. 
I mean, almost every analyst at ESPN has them penciled in to be in the college football playoff. Well, the first completion to Jeremy Davis, their big play guy on the outside. So UConn with the ball. It'll be second down for the Huskies. And you mentioned the new defensive coordinator, and there is some new defensive personnel. There's certainly a lot of talent for Florida State. But that, for tomorrow night alone, that's my question. Because Oklahoma, Mike Gundy, we know yeah. they can score points. And like we've talked about a lot in this game, it's hard to prepare for tempo. So that's going to be, for me, what I'll be watching is how does Florida State defensively adjust Oklahoma State's offense? I think there could be a little bit of struggle early on. And you never, you know, timing on offense. You're dealing with some new wide receivers. Calvin Benjamin's gone. You know, some other playmakers. So there will be some, some growing pains. Catch by Jeremy Davis. How about a little more on that Florida State-Oklahoma State matchup with Allison? Dave, while we play this game, Oklahoma State is having their walkthrough at AT&T Stadium. Heather Cox will be covering the game, told me that Mike Gundy wants to make sure there aren't any wide eyes when they kick off tomorrow against Florida State. Also, he and the coaching staff, very excited to see running back Tyreek Hill. He's a speed guy. They've got a few different formations they want to use him in. Guys are really anxious to see what they have in him. Well, that, that's exactly what you're worried about if you're Florida State. What new things are you going to see that you didn't see on film? Well, that long throw to the far sideline and knocked down intended for Kamal Abrams. So BYU holds fourth down, and UConn will have to punt the ball away. Just a ball, maybe a hair late, and a hair just, you know, you want to put a little bit more oomph into it, but also a nice pass breakup by Michael Davis from BYU as well. But just a hair late on the throw. That's why anticipation is such a big part of playing quarterback. Getting the ball out early so it gets to your receiver on time. It is Jurgens back to receive this punt from Justin Wayne. A sophomore who's punting for the first time in game action. And it hits a good one. Jurgens, no fair catch from near the 30. Gets to the left side, 40, 45. He's got some speed and cuts it upfield. Inside UConn territory, great field position when BYU will have the ball here to start this next possession. So Taysom Hill is having a big game already, big start to his 2014 season. He gets the ball back when we come back. BYU 14-0. ESPN College Football Primetime is brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Kingsford Charcoal, slow down and grill. The Hartford Current, yeah, you read it right, the oldest continuously published newspaper in America, right here in Hartford, Connecticut. A beautiful night for college football and a great crowd here at the Rent, they call it, Rentschler Field. BYU, though, on the road a long way from home with a 14-0 lead, 10-34 to go. First half, and BYU will have excellent field position after a good punt return. Hey, we'd love to see it. Some excitement about this UConn football program that just a few years ago was in a BCS Bowl. Yeah. Had a good year after good year, and the last couple a real struggle. Bob Diaco now in charge. I mean, the other thing, as lopsided as this game has been, I mean, BYU has been in control. But they have left a lot of points out there because they've been killing themselves with, with penalties. I mean, we're barely a quarter in. They have nine penalties for 89 yards. First play and an immediate completion. Broken tackle for Algie Brown. And inside the 25 all the way down near the 20-yard line. So the short pass and the long run gain of 25. And you just get that feeling if BYU scores here, game could get out of hand so if you're UConn you desperately need a stop at least hold him to a field goal they're knocking on the door play fake Hill looking now rolling right buying some time still looking downfield and he will throw it away and then another smart play from Taysom Hill I mean he's been really efficient tonight he's been smart with the football knows when there's nothing there just to throw it away Angelo Pruitt comes out Pruitt he might be their best guy up front. And that's when you start dealing with depth issues, not only due to injury, but just guys are gassed after facing this many plays. 
I mean, this defense has been on the field a long time for a lot of plays. It's still on pace for near 100 plays. Big hole up the middle, and Algie Brown knocked down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, BYU. So the 6'1", 230-pound sophomore, some powerful running. Just right up the gut, a couple nice blocks. Number 50, Edward Fusi. Brown gets it again, not this time. Good play there, Marquise Van with the tackle. So second and goal coming up for the BYU Cougars. They did, you would figure with Taysom Hill, such a weapon, the red zone would be friendly to BYU. Last year they had some problems. Now there were some games where BYU, including their bowl game, where they went up and down the field and just could not get in the end zone. Now a quick hit on the right side and walking into the end zone, touchdown. Adam Hine, who was wide open, and Hill found him. Seven-yard touchdown throw from Taysom Hill. 20 to nothing Cougars with the extra point coming. UConn tried to bring pressure, tried to blitz up the middle. Their end was on a bind, and Taysom Hill read it to perfection. Just flipped it out for the easy touchdown pass. Trevor Sampson, extra point up and good. So the great field position, BYU turns it into seven. Taysom Hill, we told you, this guy is one of the best players in college football. He can run, he can throw, and he and the Cougars, outstanding start, lead 21-0. Well, Sunday in Atlanta, some drama, only two races to go until the playoffs. 16 drivers advance with those two races left. It's the Oral-B USA 500 in Atlanta, Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Dave Fleming, Danny Cannell back here in Hartford. BYU, another touchdown throw from their star quarterback, Taysom Hill. They're doing it on the ground, through the air, 227 total yards. The penalties, the one problem for the Cougars so far otherwise it has been all BYU Sean Fox set up for the return but it's not Fox it's Josh Mariner who takes it across the 20 broke one tackle gets across the 25 as UConn's offense comes on the field we'll check in once again with Chris Cotter in the studio all right, Dave, several teams kicking off their seasons tonight, including Michigan State defending Big Ten champs. Connor Cook's off to a heck of a start. His third touchdown pass in the first quarter, 21 to nothing. Michigan State on top. A.J. Troop on the receiving end of that one. And Villanova and Syracuse, Prince Tyson Gully takes it right up the gully. 65 yards for the score. Hughes up top, 7 to nothing early, guys. All right, thanks, Chris. So UConn has the ball. It's Casey Cochran back in at quarterback and he'll throw. Nice delivery and it was juggled and out of bounds. Incomplete. Jeremy Davis and they need him to make those plays. Yeah, that's when you need your fifth year senior to step up and make that just a double clutch on the catch. Had it, just needed that extra bobble. Is there a chance maybe his right foot got in while he had possession? Possession is there. Looked like that left foot was out of bounds, though. Good call. But those are the plays you got to make to help help out your quarterback. Last year, over a thousand yards receiving, set a school record with a single game performance, over 200 yards. They get him the ball on the very next play, and he is gang tackled across the 30 along the sideline. This guy Pove, who's helping to fill in. Remember, BYU, both of their starting cornerbacks are not here, not playing tonight left back at home and so that BYU secondary a little thin so far UConn just hasn't been able to exploit it Michael Davis playing well they say Michael Davis was a converted wide receiver now playing defensive back he may be the fastest guy on the team third and five for UConn Max DiLorenzo in the backfield all alone. Cochran under center, back to pass. The short drop, the short throw complete, but I don't know. It'll depend yeah, it's on the spot. Be tight. That's where you've got to 
you know, attention to detail, the little things. If you're a receiver running that route, know where you are on the field. He did get the first down. They are moving the chains. But you want to make sure you run that route at a depth where you get the first down. And he did, right? Right, <laughs> right to the line. But Casey Cochran, he has made some good throws. He threw the interception. He was under heavy pressure and got hit right as he delivered the ball. And I think there have been some good things from him. See if they get 85 more involved. Handoff, though. And the true freshman, Ron Johnson, breaks through from Naples, Florida, across the 40 yard line. Not a bad run. They got two freshmen yeah. who are very promising. I'd like to see them get the ball in Ron Johnson and Arkell Newsom's hands a little bit more. Those guys are the future of this team. You can get them some work, some meaningful reps. They, they're the kind of guys that can make some big plays for you. Well, that's our Cal Newsom. We saw him in the past game, a little screenplay early in this game with a nice gain. Second and four for the Huskies. Cochran pressured, and he'll get rid of it, and incomplete. Intended for Deshaun Fox down the field. It's third down. That's really been the thing that's been lacking for UConn in the past game is just the vertical stretch they've taken a couple shots but really haven't been that close that was maybe their best opportunity to get the ball down the field and just missed but it's hard when your offensive line is struggling even that pass Casey Cochran had a guy breathing down his neck you know if he holds on to that ball a split second more he might have been drilled yeah the left tackle Richard Levy's a sophomore from Trenton New Jersey this is his first ever game experience they like his talent but I think he's struggling a little bit. He got beat there, and the pressure may have forced that incompletion. And maybe a penalty, too. Yeah, there's a flag on the play. Might be on big Richard Levy. Uh, it's against the Huskies. We'll see if Bronco Mendenhall accepts the Personal penalty. Personal foul. Hands to the face offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. So they decline, and it's a personal foul. It was hands to the face. Right as we were talking about him, you saw that bull rush. So it would have been 15 yards. BYU instead declines, and UConn will punt. It's been sloppy. <laughs> you don't want to put your defense out there. Maybe they get some kind of foolish penalty. Give them a first down, a gift. So you'll just take the ball when you can get it. Well, that's a good point. You, you put them in third and very long. You have a chance for a big play, but you also have a chance for a mistake. And UConn not even considering going for it. Jurgens bobbled the ball. They also blew the whistle, which should not happen. He signaled for a fair catch, then muffed it. It goes out of bounds. BYU gets a break, and they will have the ball when we come back to Hartford. It's a beautiful night here in Connecticut. Things not going so beautifully, though, for the hometown Huskies. 21-0 BYU. Chris Cotter back in our studios in Bristol. Just a reminder that Roger Federer in action right now over on ESPN2, and you can watch it on that great Watch ESPN app as well. A little U.S. Open second-round action on ESPN2. Now back to the rent. BYU in Connecticut over on ESPN, guys. All right, thank you, Chris. Indeed, welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Johns as a part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Kicking off the season in Hartford, Connecticut, but the Huskies down big 21-0, 6.45 to go in the first half. BYU hoping for a very special season and off to a good start. And really the reason why is that guy, number four. There are not many across the country who can do what this guy can do. Straight ahead running for Taysom Hill and dragging tacklers with him out near the 30, and I think he got the first down. That's what makes him so tough, and that's really, you know, the, the evolution of the quarterback position, really, is guys who can make plays with their legs and with their arms through the air, and Taysom Hill is a spectacular athlete. I had question marks about him as a passer, but he really looks like he's worked on his game, his footwork, he looks more poised, he looks comfortable in the system, and it's showing in the results. He's going to throw here if he's got somewhere to go with the ball. Scrambling, and he'll go down. Almost ran into his own offensive lineman. Otherwise, he might have had some room to the edge. And Except now for... the next step for Taysom Hill, and this is something Bronco Mendenhall, his head coach, told us yesterday is uh, tomorrow on ABC will be Mac Brown. We'll be on with John Saunders doing some studio work. And Mac 
He made me promise not to bring that game up. So you did it, not me. But it was. He rushed for 259 yards against Texas. And it was really his coming out party. I don't know, a lot of people didn't know who Taysom Hill was, and it was impressive. He had some signature performances last year. The quick hitter, left side and complete for the first down. So a nice play. Mitchell Jurgens has been very involved in this first half offense for BYU. Gain of five. That's all they needed. So first and ten, BYU. Now Taysom Hill, the junior from Pocatello, Idaho. The guy who first committed to Stanford with Jim Harbaugh went on his church mission, completes this one short underneath, and a good turn upfield after the catch. Matthews, now the ball squirts out. I, I thought the officials were signaling the ball down. Now that official says no. So Junior Joseph got the ball, and they're going to talk about this one. Bob Diaco pumped. Because as it stands, that's a turnover. Mitch Matthews got to hit hard. Yeah, and Bob Diaco desperately needs something to go his way. Here's Mitch Matthews trying to get the ball off the field, and that is a fumble. Great job getting that right hand in there. Uh, is the right knee down? No, I don't think, I don't so. think so. No, I think that's going to that's going to be a fumble, and UConn's going to get an opportunity here. What I believe is almost a must score. They have to put some points on the game. If they have any hope of getting back into this game, they've got to do it now. Yeah, that back angle. I mean, it was very close, but Matthews fumbles the ball away. Maybe you take a shot here off a turnover, take a shot down the field. See if you can capitalize on some of that momentum. And Whitmer, after he gave up the ball, he kind of took a shot on the side of his head. It is Chandler Whitmer in a quarterback for UConn. So the turnover and the Huskies get the ball complete short. And a nice move upfield inside the 40. Josh Mariner running after the catch down to the 35. So here we go, 17 yards. And maybe UConn can get a little momentum in the game. And they actually sent four guys vertical, trusted Whitmer. He's serving in the field, wants to go deep, get some pressure, knows exactly where his outlet is. That is a great job. Pocket awareness, finding your outlet, getting a positive play. And he made Alani Fua miss. The linebacker is one of the best players on this BYU defense. Hand off, Mariner cuts left, upfield. Nice run and some power at the end of the run for Mariner, who's given UConn a boost here inside the 30. And another flag is down. Man, I thought the NFL preseason games had a lot of flags, a lot of penalties. This is crazy. Sloppy first game. It's kind of what you expect, though. We've had 14 assessed penalties. Delay of game. Sideline interference. BYU. The five-yard penalty will result in a first down. And the thing about these penalties tonight, they're emptying the bucket. We're going to call every <laughs> penalty that's possible. Sideline interference. Man. You don't see that very often. Yeah, they are supposed to be emphasizing that this year. And they're going to take it literally. Whitmer throws complete to the tight end inside the 10. And then Sean McQuillan slipped and goes down. But another first down right at the 10 yard line. It's going to be first and goal, UConn. Thirteen yard pass play and the turnover look UConn on the ropes BYU was driving up 21 nothing and now here are the Huskies Chandler Whitmer throwing the ball well hands it off and the tailback Max DiLorenzo inside the 10 down close to the seven you know it wouldn't be the worst situation if UConn takes their time here <laughs> Run some time off the clock because the way BYU has been moving the ball. It's not a bad point. Maybe you limit their opportunity when they get the ball back. But I think also you want to capitalize on the momentum. I think that's why they're going up to the line of scrimmage pretty quick here. High formation. Mariner gets it. Left side running. Trying to get to the edge. Pushing his way forward and knocked out of bounds. Short of the pylon. They're going to spot the ball right around the two. Michael Davis. Save the touchdown for the moment. Yeah, nice bounce by Mariner to the outside. And then it was basically a foot race to that pile on. Michael Davis you know, able to use the out of bounds as a source of leverage and just push him out of bounds. 
Bronco Mendenhall not happy about these last few minutes. The turnover. No, you want to go for the dagger, and you're letting this team hang around. This is a big play. Maybe it's four down territory. I think it is. Third and goal. And it's still Mariner in the backfield. Whitmer looking to throw the lob over the top, and nobody's there. But here comes a flag. And I'm sure that one's going to be against BYU. Sky Pove was trying to say ball was not catchable, but it might not be an interference penalty. Pass it to Purge. Defense. Number 20. Automatic first down. But it is interference. And apparently it was catchable. That's first and goal for UConn. Number 20 right here. He does grab the tight end. He's got him locked up pretty good right there. He's holding him the entire time. I think Ball that's catchable. I, I and I think you know, it lands right near the back of yeah. the goal line. You got to assume if he did, if he wasn't held, he would have been able to catch it. So that's a break for the Huskies. Eleventh penalty called against BYU. Almost a hundred yards of penalties against the Cougars in the first half. First and goal. The pullback shuffles over the pitch to Mariner, and Mariner fighting for the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, UConn. The fumble set it up, and the Huskies took advantage. A nice run in by Josh Mariner, too. The last time we talked about him, he's making that sprint for the pylon. That time made a nice cut right up the middle of the field, put his shoulder down, and went right through BYU's defense. Physical run from Mariner. The extra point try for Bobby Puyol. Snap was a good one. Kick up and through. Well, you think the first year head coach for the Huskies is pumped up, Bob Diaco? He waited a long time to have his team score seven. Well, UConn on the board for the first time here in 2014. They got a turnover, and the offense turned it into points. The kickoff, and Adam Hine from right near the goal line brings it out. Hine right side running, breaks a tackle out near the 30, squirts through again. Pretty tough running from Hine as BYU gets the ball back with 2.24 to go until halftime. Let's check in in the studio with Chris Cotter. All right, David, two minutes, 24 seconds. I'll be joining you at the half along with Robert Smith and Coach Holtz. We'll talk about Michigan State getting started tonight as well. And boy, are they having a great time of things up in East Lansing. What about Kenny Hill? Forget about Johnny Manziel. The legend of Kenny Hill grows in College Station. And also we'll hear from Coach Saban about his quarterback situation as the Tide prepare to take on West Virginia. All right, Chris, we'll look forward to that. First down, BYU, and the quick hitter from Taysom Hill. The big hit, but hanging on, Taron Houck with the catch for a BYU first down, and they are built for the two-minute offense. Remember I talked about UConn maybe wanting to utilize a little bit of the clock. Two minutes is an eternity for an offense like this. They don't have to do anything differently than they do the rest of the game. 14 yards, getting near midfield. Hill looking to pass. Looking middle, throws short middle, caught, but a quick tackle. Colby Pearson with the reception. Second down, clock continues to move. But one thing, UConn does get the ball to start the second half. If their defense can find a way to get a stop here, it's just a two-touchdown game. Up the middle, handoff for a short gain, Algie Brown. So now it's third down, and that clock continues to roll. 140 to go until halftime. UConn making some substitutions, having trouble getting guys in the field, but so is BYU bringing in an offensive lineman coming at the center position, something you don't see a lot. So it's third and two. Hill will pass it backwards. Lasique gets a block and gets the first down inside the 40, and he is tough to tackle all the way down to the 35. We saw a very similar play in the first quarter where a little option route on the outside instead of your typical pitch, your shovel pass. Taysom Hill actually throws it backwards. Not a bad way to get it to him quickly. Put some pressure on the edge. Yeah, that, he does that well. Yeah. 12 yards, first down. Clock stops on the first down. 115 to go. Hill pressured again, gets away again. And he's going to throw. He's got his man caught. 
Inside the 10, inside the 5, diving for the goal line, touchdown. Taron Houck. And what a play on both ends, really, the question. Did he stay in bounds before he got to the pylon? Taron Houck walking the tightrope right there. I think Boy, he that, did. I think he did. I, I think he's in bounds. He's about as close as you can get, but I think he walked the tightrope to perfection right there. Uh, I'm assuming they are going to take a look. I mean, it's very, very he close. Displayed a ruling of touchdown is under view. I think he's in, though. I, I think he uh, is, too. I mean, how about the play from Taysom Hill? He has really been impressive tonight. That time, buying a little extra time in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, finding Hauk, who I don't think there's any way you see anything nope. but a touchdown there. I, th I think those two looks show you that there's some green in between yeah. the foot and the out-of-bounds line. Just Not a much. sliver. <laughs> Maybe a blade of grass. Yeah, but enough. But you're right. I mean, th this is what they're reviewing. But Taysom Hill made that happen. And then Taron Hauk. Paid it off with the excellent effort to get to that pylon. Just one different angle. I, I don't think so. Again, it's pretty clear. And you can understand them taking a close look here. It's a big play. But you, you need that evidence that is clear to overturn the call on the field. The officials were right there looking at it. They made the call touchdown. And you know, both, both head coaches will wait for the official ruling. You know what impresses me about Taysom Hill? That balance of knowing when to run, when to tuck it, and then when to survey the field and take the pass. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So not just stands, it's confirmed. What a play for BYU touchdown. And big smiles for the junior captain from Pocatello, Idaho. There's some people there who call him the best athlete in Idaho high school history. And you can see all that athleticism in everything he does. Not an answer for Taysom Hill and company. So the extra point from Trevor Sampson is up and good. And BYU has a 28 to 7 lead with one minute to go until halftime. Dave Fleming, Danny Cannell here in Connecticut. Looking forward, Danny, to a big one tomorrow, Clemson and Georgia. Yeah, Brent Venable's defense for Clemson led by Vic Beasley. And then I think Todd Gurley is the best back in the country. He can really take a game over. Struggled a little bit staying healthy last year, but they've got Keith Marshall back from an ACL injury. I think they'll be able to spell him. But that game is going to be phenomenal. And I think, look, it's a non-conference game, but Georgia had to get a little boost. They watched South Carolina, an SEC East team, last night not play particularly well. Georgia's got to be thinking, hey, we got an opportunity this year to have a very special year. They do, and that's who they play next. So they've got one of these, the, again, Georgia, so many times it happens. They start off the season really tough schedule. This week it's Clemson, then South Carolina. I think they can still go one and one and still fight their way back into a college football playoff. But you want to try to keep things in your own destiny. They get Clemson at home, South Carolina on the road. But I think you're, I'm with you. They have to feel a lot more confident going to the matchup, seeing some of the weakness that South Carolina showed defensively last night. Almost like what we were talking about with Oklahoma State with Clemson, the offensive system, the coordinator. You just figure they can put points on the board. A kick return and not a real good one. UConn pinned back deep with 56 seconds to go until halftime. Our Friday focus, we're talking about that game with Georgia Clemson, and uh, it should be a real good one. They're getting ready for that matchup. Top 20 teams, Clemson with the without Sammy Watkins, with a new quarterback in place, Georgia replacing the quarterback, but so many of those skill stars that Danny's talking about. And Georgia, I mean, Georgia's the favorite in that game, and they get to play at home, but it's another one where you can sort of envision a scenario where Clemson 
is able to, to run with yeah, him. Keep I mean, up. I, I know they lost Taj Boyd, but they've got one of the best offensive coordinators in the game in Chad Morris. And I thought it was really interesting that Allison Williams was telling us that she learned, you know, in, in that Deshaun Watson is going to play Summit quarterback alongside Cole Stout. I mean, that was one of the top quarterbacks in the country coming out of high school. Allison and I were at the spring game in Clemson, and he couldn't play. He was hurt, and there was a lot of people that are high on him as a quarterback, so maybe they'll try to work a two-quarterback system at Clemson. Well, they're trying it here at UConn. Chandler Whitmer, who led that last touchdown drive, still in the game. 51 seconds until halftime, and they're handing the ball off. So I don't think the Huskies have any real strong ideas about putting points on the board here before halftime. Part of that is the field position. And they do call a timeout, and it's not UConn calling the timeout. BYU call that timeout. And a heads-up timeout, too. They're thinking, hey, we get the ball back. We can hit a couple big plays and add to this lead. I mean, it's, that's an aggressive call, and I like it. Or you at least force a punt, and who knows? Week yeah. one, special teams mistakes sort of go hand in hand. They want plays, too. <laughs> they want to get a couple more plays they can add to their tally. And speaking of plays, we know Arizona will run a bunch of them. 10.30 Eastern right here on ESPN. UNLV going to Tucson. Rich Rod. You have BYU, you got Texas Tech, you got Arizona, some of those teams across the country, they want to pile up the play calls. Hey, it's the new trend in college football, and it's here to stay, and you're seeing it make its way into the NFL as well. Now, De Lorenzo handoff, and he gets the first down. So I assume that BYU is not going to use another timeout. Clock stops on the first down. Although the clock is rolling here. And I don't know if anybody's going to protest that. I think both teams are, are content now to go into the locker room for halftime. Taysom Hill, the star of the show here tonight. De Lorenzo, another handoff, and that will be the final play before halftime. So, Taysom Hill and BYU go to the locker room, Danny, with a lot to be happy about. Yeah, they've got to feel thrilled with their performance. Can eliminate some penalties, but really excellent execution on the offensive side of the ball and defensively as, too, as well. So Bob Diaco, first-year head coach, heading to the locker room at halftime for the first time in his opener with this UConn Huskies program. And they had some momentum there. They scored the touchdown but gave up the seven points late, which had to make Bronco Mendenhall happy. Speaking of, let's go down to Allison Williams. Thank you guys very much, Coach Mendenhall. What does it do for your team being able to answer the UConn touchdown and score the final TD of this half? That was the biggest drive of the game so far. UConn did a nice job after the turnover and scored a touchdown, but to answer right, the, uh, right after that negated that entire drive. So, uh, to me, the momentum shifted right back. How would you describe the performance of Taysom Hill in this first half? Taysom's doing a really nice job managing the game. The supporting cast around him needs to play cleaner. It would make his job much easier. We do that, um, we'll gain even more momentum than we have, I think. All right, Bronco, thank you. Thanks. Danny, Dave. Well, smile. He's happy. The Cougars with the big lead here at halftime. It's 28-7 to in Hartford. Now we're going to send it to the studio.